Balance of payments on financial account is determined primarily by interest rates. We just saw that. Balance of payments on our goods and services is determined by the market for goods and services. These are international markets for these goods and services. But then now the next question is, what ensures that the balance of payments is actually balanced? The answer over here is, exchange rate exchange rate is really what determines that our balance of payments are balanced that is our current account is equivalent to our financial account or the summation of our current account and financial account are equal to zero in order to understand the exchange rate and movements in our balance of payment accounts let's look at first what the exchange rate is exchange rate is simply the price of one currency in terms of the other now the market over here is the foreign exchange market if i am selling canadian dollars what is the price of that Canadian dollar in terms of US dollars or if I'm buying Canadian dollars how much US dollars do I pay in order to get one Canadian dollar so in my example over here I'm looking at the market for the Canadian dollar and the price of the Canadian dollar is in terms of the US dollar or you can say in terms of some foreign currency in this table over here I have the value of the Canadian dollar in terms of US dollars yen and euros and this is as of March 29 2021 so the price of the same Canadian dollar in terms of some major global currencies. I don't have to look at all of them at the same time. When we're looking at the market for the Canadian dollar, we can specifically look at its price in terms of US dollar or in terms of yen or in terms of euros. We don't have to simultaneously look at all three. Now, what happens when a currency gains value? What do we mean by that? An appreciation of a currency is when it becomes more expensive. So for example, if the exchange rate for the Canadian dollar was 0.79 US dollars per Canadian Canadian dollar today and tomorrow it becomes 0.9 US dollars per Canadian dollar. That means each Canadian dollar is now more expensive. So when it's gaining value, its price is going up, it is appreciating. Whenever one currency appreciates, the other one must be depreciating. If you look at these two numbers in terms of US dollars, as a US citizen, I could buy the same Canadian dollar for 79 cents and now in order to buy the same Canadian dollar, I have to give up 90 cents. So the US dollar is becoming weaker as the Canadian dollar is strengthening. So we often use the term strengthening as a synonym for appreciation and a weakening dollar as a depreciation. In this example over here, Canadian dollar has appreciated and because US dollar lost value, it has depreciated. So depreciation is just the exact opposite of an appreciation. When the currency loses value, it is called a depreciation. In terms of the price of Canadian dollar, a depreciation means that the Canadian dollar is now cheaper. So instead of giving up 79 cents US, you only have to give up 69 cents US. Exchange rate is price of one currency in terms of the other. So we can write the exchange rate as how many US dollars do we have to pay for each Canadian dollar. This is price of one Canadian dollar in terms of US dollars. The exchange rate between these two currencies can also be expressed as how many Canadian dollars do we pay. So what is the price of a US dollar in terms of Canadian dollars. Now in January 2020, let's assume the exchange rate was 70 cents US dollar per Canadian Canadian dollar. Alternatively, the same exchange rate can be written as 1.43 Canadian dollars for each US dollar. How did I get from here to here? If we take the inverse of this number, inverse would be 1 over 0.7, you get the alternative exchange rate. So we have Canadian dollars per US dollar and that number is 1.43. Likewise, if you had this exchange rate, we can always get this one by again taking the inverse of 1.43. So which format should should we use? It depends upon which currency you're focusing on. If I'm looking at the market for Canadian dollars, it makes more sense to use the price of Canadian dollar. So I would rather use US dollar per Canadian dollar. If I'm focusing on the market for US dollars, it makes more sense to look at the price of US dollar. So Canadian dollar per US dollar. So note whichever market you're focusing on, you will look at the price of the domestic currency. So it's best to look at the exchange rate as foreign currency per unit of the domestic currency. So if I'm focusing on the market for Canadian dollar, the price of a Canadian dollar would be in terms of US dollars per Canadian. If I'm focusing on the market for yen, then it's best to look at some foreign currency per yen. So the foreign currency could be euros, foreign currency could be Canadian dollars, foreign currency could be US dollars. Now, whenever our domestic currency is becoming more expensive, we immediately know it is an appreciation 
depreciation. When the domestic currency is becoming cheaper, so you have to give up less units of the foreign unit to get the same $1 of the domestic currency, the domestic currency is losing value and hence we call it a depreciation. So the more euros you get for each Canadian dollar, it's an appreciation. The less euros you get for each Canadian dollar, it's a depreciation. This way, your appreciation is in sync with a higher numerical value and depreciation of the domestic currency is in sync with a lower numerical value. But remember, the numerical values are in terms of the foreign currency or the alternative currency against which you are ascertaining the value of the dollar. Understanding the price of a currency will now help us look at the demand and the supply curve of the currency. Now, in exchange rate market, we have two parties. We have buyers and sellers of the good. So now we have buyers of Canadian dollars and sellers of Canadian dollars. Buyers of Canadian dollars, people who want to hold this currency, are primarily foreigners. Foreigners need to convert their currency into Canadian dollars in order to buy Canadian goods and services, Canadian assets. Likewise, the supply of currency will come from domestic residents. We don't have to buy Canadian dollars. We primarily earn Canadian dollars. We don't have to specifically go and buy Canadian dollars in order to buy Canadian goods and services. We already have them. Just like foreigners need our currency to buy our goods, we need to sell our currency in order to purchase foreign goods and services. So if I want to buy European made goods and services or an import from Europe, I have to sell Canadian dollars, buy euros in order to facilitate that purchase. So whether the purchase is in terms of goods, services or assets. So remember the exchange rate is being used both for current account transactions and for financial account transactions. Let's now look at the shape of the two curves and remember we are going to look at price of the Canadian dollar. So it's best to look at the exchange rate as some foreign currency per unit of the Canadian dollar. If the foreign currency is in terms of euros, the price of the Canadian dollar becomes euros per Canadian. The demand curve for a Canadian dollar will be downward sloping. This is primarily because demand is coming remember from foreigners so in our case let's assume that to be Europeans so when the euro price of dollar goes down Canadian dollar is becoming cheaper so all goods and services that Europeans want to purchase from Canada are now cheaper for them as our goods are cheaper for them they are willing to buy more of our goods and services and our assets this is of course Cetris Peribus holding everything else constant so lower the value of the dollar higher is the quantity demanded for the Canadian dollar and this gives you your in inverse relationship between the two or our downward sloping demand curve for the Canadian dollar. Supply of the Canadian dollar in this market will be upward sloping. In order to understand this, let's again look at the price of the Canadian dollar. We are pricing it in terms of euros, so euros per Canadian dollar. Again, let's assume the Canadian dollar is becoming cheaper. So the price of the Canadian dollar is going down. Whenever the Canadian dollar loses value, foreign goods are going to become more expensive for us. And if they're becoming more expensive for us, we're going to buy less of them. And therefore, if we are buying less of them, quantity supplied of the Canadian dollar is also going to go down. Here you see a positive relationship between the two, and that gives us our upward sloping supply curve. Putting the two together, we have the downward sloping demand curve for the Canadian dollar, upward sloping supply curve of the Canadian dollar. Remember, the demand comes from foreigners and the supply comes from domestic residents. Price over here is in terms of euros per Canadian dollar. Higher the price of the Canadian dollar on the y-axis, the Canadian dollar has appreciated. Lower the price of the Canadian dollar in terms of euros, the Canadian dollar has depreciated. Equilibrium in the market is where quantity supplied exactly equals quantity demanded. So where the two curves intersect. So the equilibrium exchange rate is simply the exchange rate at which the quantity demanded is exactly equal to the quantity supplied. In this example, that is at 0.76 euros. The equilibrium exchange rate is extremely important because this ensures that our balance of payments will be overall zero. The summation of our current account and our financial account will also come out to be zero. To understand that, let's use a numerical example. Remember, quantity supplied and quantity demanded is coming from all those people who are buying Canadian dollars and all those people who are selling Canadian dollars. Buyers are Europeans and sellers are domestic residents. So overall, European purchases of Canadian dollars, that is the quantity demanded is coming from Europeans, whether they are buying our goods and services in our current account or whether they are buying our financial assets in our financial account. This total quantity purchased of dollars 
must be exactly equal to the total Canadian sales of dollars. So let's assume Europeans purchase overall 2 billion Canadian dollars in order to buy Canadian goods and services and in order to buy Canadian assets. We are assuming 1 billion dollars in each of these categories. For Canadians who are sellers of Canadian dollars, we need to sell them whenever we have to buy foreign goods for our imports in our current account or if we are buying foreign assets. So when we are lending to foreigners. So let's assume Canadians are now buying imports worth 1.5 billion dollars and they're purchasing European assets worth 0.5 billion dollars. Total sale of Canadian dollars is again 2 billion dollars. So you can see total quantity demanded by foreigners is exactly equal to the total quantity supplied of Canadian dollars by the domestic residents. The Canadian balance of payments will again sum up to be zero. If I look at in terms of current account and financial account, I have a current account deficit of 0.5 billion dollars because our exports are lower than our imports whereas our financial account is in a surplus. Foreigners are buying more of our assets compared to what we are buying from them in terms of financial instruments or financial assets. So over here we have a financial account surplus of 0.5 billion dollars. The summation of your current account and your financial account will give you balance of payments of zero. Let's now look at what happens when there are fluctuations in the exchange rate market. These fluctuations can be coming from either the demand side or the supply side. In terms of the demand, if demand for the Canadian dollar goes up, this could be because foreigners prefer made in Canada goods, preferences have changed. This could be because the interest rate is higher in the domestic economy or return on investment opportunities is higher over here compared to elsewhere across the globe. So for some reason, foreigners are willing to buy more of Canadian goods and services or more of Canadian assets. As they want to buy more of these goods and services or assets, they have to buy more of our domestic currency. So the demand for the Canadian dollar goes up at any given exchange rate. So as the demand increases, we have a higher intersection point over here and the Canadian dollar has appreciated. Now what does this appreciation mean for our economy? A higher value of the Canadian dollar means that our goods are now more expensive for foreigners. Foreigners are going to buy less of our goods. Our exports are going down. On the other hand, a stronger Canadian dollar means that foreign goods are now cheaper for us. So that will cause our imports to rise. This fall in exports and rise in imports causes our net exports or the merchandise trade balance to go down. Merchandise trade balance is a major part of our current account so this causes our current account to go down. If the current account is in a deficit, the deficit becomes bigger. If the current account was in a surplus, the surplus in the current account is now smaller than before. Financial account moves in the opposite direction of the current account. So in this case, the financial account is going to go up. The surplus in the financial account is going to become bigger. If it was in a deficit, the deficit becomes smaller. So with the exchange rate appreciation, our current account is decreasing and our financial account is increasing. Overall, you'll see that the balance of payments will still remain balanced. Now they are balanced at a higher exchange rate.